So as it turns out, Fred Flintstone was a better assassin than Altair, or at least he had more experience. Imagine Assassin's Creed Bedrock where you're climbing up dinosaurs to try and kill people. There, Ubisoft, you get that one for free. Can't wait for the origin story about a disagreement over Barney's crab lawnmower, which leads to him becoming the first Templar. Hey, Fred, people have too much freedom. Mankind would lead itself to destruction unless we control them. Hello again people, in this video I'm going to talk about stealth games and how they embrace humanity's oldest tradition. Stealth is such a broad topic of discussion as it encompasses many video games that have been released. Stealth is defined as a cautious, unobtrusive, and secretive way of moving or proceeding intended to avoid detection. Stealth is used in an incredible number of games. Action RPGs, shooters, horror games, and many others. All of these games use stealth as a means to fight something that which conventional means would be ineffective. Stealth is typically used as a means to overcome an isometric threat, something that is bigger, faster, or in greater numbers than you. You cannot just run up to this threat and remove it immediately, so you are going to have to find a way to weaken or subdue your opponent. The most skilled of fighters may be able to take on two or even three opponents given their tools and skill, but in war, numbers matter, and the more and more you add, the lesser your odds become. Stealth can also be a means to diversify gameplay, as sometimes stealth is optional, just something thrown in to make the gameplay feel fresh and new. The roleplay aspect of stealth emboldens the player into believing they are the silent assassin which they are playing. The innate feeling of success, without alerting enemies to your presence, is icing atop a cake of success. Stealth is a concept that predates video games. It even predates technology. Stealth was such a large part of our human evolution, as it was essential for our survival. Think back thousands of years ago, where humans first began to develop intelligence. Tool construction, clothing, and shelters were the foundation of our hunter-gatherer society. Humans eventually did create farms, but before that, humans were purely a nomadic hunter-gatherer race, and more importantly, humans were not at the top of the food chain. We hunted our food, and we were hunted ourselves. Predators incorporate stealth into their daily lives instinctually, and through natural selection, the most efficient hunters were allowed to pass on their genes. Early humans were no exception to this, as they learned and in a way shaped the tenets of stealth which we are now using in video games today. These tenets are known by many people all over the world whether they acknowledge them or not. Many people still have these instincts because of these early humans who survived. To put it plainly, the old humans, who were able to understand stealth, were able to adequately hunt for their food, reproduce, and pass on their knowledge to their children. Simultaneously, a human would also need to understand how to avoid a predator that incorporates stealth to survive. Side note, this is also one of the main reasons we have a deep-seated fear of predators known for stealth, like snakes or spiders. Also, it's because they're ugly. Conflict has always been ingrained within human history, and warfare demands ingenuity if you are aiming to win. Stealth has always been an invaluable way to gain the upper hand in battle. The American Revolutionary War was won with guerrilla warfare and sneak attacks. The Japanese would issue a sneak attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, and even today, we incorporate the use of drones and satellites to spy on our enemies. The more information that you can obtain about your opponent without them realizing will always improve your combat effectiveness. Simply getting the drop on your opponent could be the difference between victory and defeat. I find it best to categorize stealth into a series of tenets. The tenets of stealth are all based on the hindering or subverting of a particular sensation your opponent has. These senses are mainly sight, hearing, and smell. Very rarely do you have to worry about touch in a stealth scenario, because if your opponent is close enough to touch you, then stealth might be off the table at that point. And if we're talking about taste, well, unless you're curious, I wouldn't want to ask my pursuer how I taste, but that's just me. Number one. We'll start off with smell. Typically, smell is a mechanic I see least in modern games. Smell only really comes up as a mechanic in games that require you to hunt animals. This seems to be something overlooked by many AAA developers, even though it is something that would affect if you were detected or not. Humans smell, especially in high stress environments, and the smell is bound to be picked up by the prey you are hunting, as well as potential predators. 
especially if you're doing things like running through trees or climbing buildings or jumping off rooftops. Mitigating the smell as a gameplay mechanic typically involves the player spraying themselves with a fragrance that is more alluring to the prey. This action is meant to sabotage the enemy's sense of smell to attract them to what will be their demise. Another tactic used by game developers is the simple immersive idea of adding a wind mechanic to their game. Watch where the wind is traveling. Make sure you are not downwind, lest you are smelled and your prey runs away. These techniques have been inspired by various hunting strategies that have been passed down and still widely used today both IRL and in our video games. Sight is obviously the most widely used stealth mechanic in video games because sight is the easiest to understand and it's probably going to be required for you to be able to see your enemy. Your enemy has eyes. If those eyes are not pointed in your general direction, they cannot see you. Sight is used, or more accurately, avoided through the evasion of predators, as well as to gain the upper hand on your prey. Sight is the most used and easiest mechanic because of its perceived simplicity, no pun intended. Implementation of line of sight as a gameplay mechanic is very versatile. Line of sight can be subverted before and after your enemies have been alerted. Players use smoke bombs to hinder the enemy's visibility in an area without removing their ability to see entirely. Mainly used in modern war game scenarios, smoke bombs may be quieter than a flashbang but still alert your enemy to your presence. Best used after you go loud, so to speak. Some are not so subtle, like the countless hay bales scattered around the Assassin's Creed game. While the simple placement of a perch and Dishonored can be an incredible way to allow your players a hiding spot without breaking immersion. Within more natural environments, the incorporation of camouflage can be used. Sometimes it is as simple as wearing a ghillie suit or an arctic suit depending on the environment. Camouflage is found all over the animal kingdom. Human intelligence is what allows us to understand camouflage as a concept and more importantly, use it against our prey. This custom of wearing clothing, born out of necessity, has evolved to become a means of expression rather than survival. Hearing is a special case when it comes to video games, as hearing has the most potential for interaction. Equipping a special item to produce sound, using special equipment or techniques to generate sound, are all interesting ways developers have incorporated sound into a stealth scenario. Sound can be utilized for misdirection. Partially alerting your target to your presence while not sounding off the alarms completely is a perfect way to make your prey work for you. Sound is always a factor in a hunting or war scenario, as it is typically the first thing to alert your enemy. Whether it's a coin toss or a whistle, the simplest of noises can draw out the curiosity, which will inevitably kill the cat. It should also be mentioned that hearing is most likely the hardest to implement, as to accurately do so, you would need to understand sound waves and how they travel. Distance, environment, and loudness are all factors that a developer must think about to properly make an immersive sound experience. These tenets are the foundation of how stealth is understood from the real world, which are then incorporated into the games we play. Conflict is a fundamental part of human history, but what happens when you fight an opponent that is larger than you? You have to get creative. If your opponent is too tough or in too high numbers, try to get in close so they do not see you. Hide your scent because if they don't see you, they might smell you. Above all else, move quietly because if they cannot see or smell you, then hearing you will absolutely blow your cover. Technology and Magic Stealth has been an integral part of our evolution. Stealth is no longer needed for survival in the modern world, but we still emulate it in our media. Certain video games in particular have taken the ideas of stealth and pushed them to new heights through the incorporation of magic and technology. Fantasy worlds like that of the Dishonored series have given new birth to stealth in the form of The Outsider's Magic. The Outsider's Magic offers incredible magical abilities, when upgraded, bend time allows you to stop time completely for a duration. Enemies cannot see or hear you. Remember the tenets of stealth? This power allows you to subvert two senses in one go. Another ability is one of possession, where you literally take control of an enemy undermining all of their senses at once while removing their autonomy as well. Comparably, Payday 2 provides players ways to even the playing field and even using the enemy's tech against them. The ECM Jammer is a versatile piece of electronic and an asset for any stealth run. In its base form, the ECM can disrupt security cameras, allowing you to avoid detection. 
When upgraded, the UCM can be used to overload enemy communications, blowing out their eardrums and incapacitating them. You can use it to hack a series of doors and ATMs as well. It can even be used to turn police turrets against them. So that's three senses. Sight, hearing, and turret. Wait, what? Technological advancement, as well as imagination, has allowed stealth to be pushed into the modern world. Stealth can also be used within the context of grand strategy games. Hearts of Iron 4, more specifically, one of its many pricey DLCs, allows you to gain access to the intelligence agency. This mechanic allows you to covertly gain intelligence on enemy forces to identify what kind of equipment they have. Simultaneously, you can plant false intelligence in the form of fake divisions to misdirect your opponent's forces away from your main attack. You can also use the intelligence agency to destabilize a region by using your covert agents to spread propaganda, or even steal enemy blueprints, allowing you to turn the enemy's best equipment against them. These innovations keep stealth in the minds of players who would otherwise believe it to be a slow-paced snorefest. Stealth is seemingly integrated into our DNA, as we still find new and interesting ways within our media to emulate stealth outside the typical hunting game. Stealth is utilized across an assortment of games, but how do different developers approach stealth as a concept? Dishonor takes a player-way approach in the sense that it provides a handful of pathways to progress. To further the weight of player choice, a chaos system is also in place. Less kills equals lower chaos and the minimization of damage done to the people of Dunwall. Higher kills creates higher chaos, which leads to a drearier ending for the people of Dunwall. Both of these options require some use of stealth, but the subtleties of how player actions change depending on your level of chaos make playing the same level again anything but dull. Observe this low chaos run in which I don't kill anyone. You'll notice that I pick moments in which guards are out of view of each other to strike. I also put effort into the hiding of bodies because they are simply unconscious and if found would be brought back into the fight. Sleep darts are invaluable for dispatching groups of enemies at a time when combined with the bend time. Great care is taken in my next move. I survey the area before moving and I am forced to think more creatively to move through the environment. Now let's see how the run changes while in higher chaos. My methodology shifts completely from how can I get around this group of enemies to how can I kill this group of enemies in quick succession. Instead of using stealth to avoid conflict, I begin to use stealth to engage and end conflict as quickly as possible. Remember, stealth doesn't always mean you are never detected, but simply to attempt to avoid detection. Stealth can absolutely be used as a method of ambush to gain the upper hand on a group that would otherwise take you out. Dishonored's combat is intentionally designed so that fighting multiple enemies would be incredibly difficult. The equipment that I use changes as well, as I opt in for using more rewiring kits which make the enemy traps work in my favor. How does this relate to the hunter-gatherer lifestyle? To put it plainly, you are making a choice, predator or prey. In low chaos scenario, you are prey, so you must dodge and hide in every rabbit hole you can find. While in high chaos, you are the predator. You must stalk your prey, learn its weaknesses and strengths, then execute your plan to kill as efficiently as possible. A good hunter strikes not when they can, but rather when their prey cannot strike back. Payday 2 is a first person shooter centered around a gang of criminals who perform all sorts of law breaking. Some heists have the option to be completed without sounding the alarm. If done so correctly, the police are never called and you are free to reap your rewards without excess bloodshed. Also, if you complete a job full stealth, you are given an XP bonus for your next job. Payday 2's detecting system is based around concealment. If you have a low concealment stat, you are less suspicious at the cost of only bringing small weapons. The innovation of Payday 2's stealth options revolve around a special RNG mechanic. Take this bank level for instance. The security room, vault, and cameras are randomly placed within a level every single time you load in. The allure of Payday 2 is that you will never get the same positioning twice, adding to the replay value. This uncertainty requires you to think on the fly as things in Payday 2 can go from bad to worse. Look at this example here. The last guard in this bank spotted me in this doorway, so I had no choice to kill him. Then, I'm also forced to kill nearby civilians so they don't run away and call the police. This commotion also causes the civilians in the main lobby to become alert, so after answering the last guard's pager, 
I spring into action by sprinting over to the bank tellers and 86ing them before they can trip the silent alarm. Afterwards, I am forced to murder any remaining hostages that I did not have cable ties for. Payday 2 requires quick thinking, but it also requires you to think ahead. If I didn't use my ECM jammer to open up the security room first, then that entire show would have been on camera ending my run. A good hunter always takes notice of how many arrows they have. Undead Lab Survival Horror State of Decay aims to give a zombie experience that's just realistic enough. Zombies hear your every action, but also taking a bite out of an apple allows you to run for a longer duration. State of Decay incorporates many aspects of stealth and how a zombie-filled environment will require stealth for your basic survival. Line of sight is important, yes, but sound plays the biggest role in this game. Sound from vehicles, guns, and even your shoes need to be considered, otherwise the zombie horde will be notified of your arrival. When playing State of Decay, you have to think about every action you take and how it could potentially attract attention to you. Driving a car may be more convenient, but how many zombies will you bring home with you? State of Decay plays into the predator-prey dynamic a little differently, as the status depends on numbers. You versus a handful of zombies is no problem. You versus two or three hordes of zombies is a different story. Don't even bother weighing your odds when one of the special infected the feral is around. Just run. Every regular zombie can be instantly killed with stealth, granted you can sneak up on them. Therefore, sound can be used as a friend or disregarded and become your enemy. A good hunter is never seen. A great hunter is never heard. These games each have a solid place upon the pantheon of stealth games. Each game understands stealth mechanics and implements with their own flavor to remain stout in a saturated genre. Video games are incredibly popular forms of media, with no intention of dying off anytime soon. This success can be directly attributed to the evolution of our incredibly adaptive brain. Whenever we complete a challenge, or a task, the brain releases a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Upon its release, Dopamine provides a feeling of excellence and satisfaction. The brain has evolved in such a way so that certain actions we take provide us with varying levels of dopamine. These actions were paramount to our survival. Acquiring food and procreating are both fine examples. Today, the hunt for food is less of a demanding task in first world societies, and subsequently we have taken to give ourselves new challenges to continue to imitate our ancestors' hard work. Video games offer many dopamine responses to the player as most games present an obstacle before awarding you the congratulations screen. Stealth games offer an assortment of satisfying challenges all of their own. Arguably, the stealth playstyle gives you the most authentic dopamine response as it emulates the stalking and striking of yesteryear. The way you sift through enemies within modern video games is akin to the way you would hunt in ancient times. Human consciousness allows the player to have an awareness of our enemy's senses, and more importantly, how to subvert them. Utilizing your brain matter to creatively outwit your opponent through skill or technique provides an exceptional dopamine response indeed. There is no question that as predators, humanity has developed an inherent instinct to hunt. We use this instinct every day, whether we're trying to find a parking spot, seek out the cheapest price, or even chasing the newest trends. Stealth video games all have devout characteristics that harken back to the primordial ways of early hominids. Today, we the human race are surrounded by technology even our grandparents couldn't imagine, but the brain has remained the same relatively. Not much has changed about how our brains function compared to our ancestors, and it shows. We see likenesses of our old hunter-gatherer civilization in our media we play. Yes, we put our own modern spin on it, but the basics will take a long time to change. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something in this video, or at the very least, learned something from your ancestors. Goodbye.